Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this month's Town Hall Hangout. Um, I am sorry for starting two minutes after time. Uh, there was a very loud uh, construction working noise coming from outside the office, so I thought I would wait for that to, to stop before I switched on the broadcast. Um, so uh, very warm welcome to anybody who's, who's tuning into the, the Hangout today uh, from wherever you are in the world. Um, I usually just give a couple of minutes at the start of these to just let people tune in so they get their notifications from Google and um, tune into the call. Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to see uh, when people join. If you um, let me know that you're here using the questions panel. Um, in case you can't see the questions panel on your uh, screen, uh, to access it, look in the top right-hand corner of your video screen. And here you'll see an icon consisting of nine small white squares in a grid. If you click that, uh, you get to select the, the Q&A icon. So for anybody who's new to Google Plus or new to Hangouts, um, look for the, the little white squares and you should be able to select the Q&A there. Um, if you then want to let me know that you're, you're on the call, um, that would be really great to know who's, who's listening. Um, I can see a question already uh, from Brian Friedlander, who's joining us from New Jersey in the USA. Uh, Brian's asking, will we be starting soon? And hopefully, as you can see, Brian, the answer is yes, we will be starting soon. And in fact, we have now started. Um, I can also see that um, Barney there has just left some information for people to understand how to do the, uh, the Q&A. If you want to ask a question during the session, please do. I will try and answer the questions as they come. There's usually a little bit of a time delay between what I'm talking about, what you're hearing, and then the questions. Um, so if we find ourselves getting a little bit out of sync, I will try to, uh, to at least pay attention to the questions as they come in. Um, so. As a way of introduction to these uh, town hall hangouts, the idea of these, um, when we created them, we did the first one of these about six months ago. And the goal for these really is for me to be able to give uh, members of our community a little bit of an update about some of the key projects that we're working on at biggerplate.com. Ideally, we'd like to get your feedback about them. If you have questions about the things I'm talking about, we would like to, to get some discussion going. Um, I know this is not the most interactive form because it's basically me talking at you. But again, if we if we use the um, questions panel, I can hopefully pick up some of the questions there. We want to get your feedback and we want to get your ideas. Um, we're trying to use Google Hangouts as a way of uh, connecting with people around the world a little bit more easily than uh, obviously having to travel to all the places where bigger plate members live. Um, so it's a really good way for us to hopefully connect with you as a community and give you a little bit of an update about what's happening in the bigger plate world um, and ideally get your suggestions, ideas, feedback, uh, criticism, whatever that might be. Um, so I can just see a few more people telling me they're on. So Bart van der Pot is coming to us from the Netherlands and I think Bart will be seeing you in a couple of weeks time uh, in London for the Bigger Plate conference. So um, look forward to seeing you again there Bart and thanks for joining us today. I can also see we've got uh, Andrea from Exam Time uh, tuning in. Uh, and hi, Andrea. Andrea is coming today from Dublin, I believe. Um, if anybody has uh, not had a look at examtime.com yet, it's a really great resource for students and it has a really interesting mind mapping aspect built into it. Um, so, anybody else involved in education, definitely go and have a look at examtime.com. Um, so I can see we've got a few viewers on and, and um, thanks for letting me know you're there. As I said before, if anybody has any questions or comments as we go through, please post them in the questions box and I will try my best to answer and respond. What I'm going to do now is just flick my screen to show you a, a map with some um, prompts for me to remember what I'm supposed to be talking about today. Um, so hopefully if I just click here and show... Right, I've lost it already. Well, that's a good start. Um, let me try again. Oops, uh, here we go. So hopefully now um, you'll be seeing my screen. I'm just going to flip back and hopefully there you go. Um, this is a, a MindMeister map just containing some um, key reminders for me of what I'm supposed to be talking about. Um, I hope you're all seeing this, but I'm, uh, as always, working on one screen, so it's slightly harder to see. So my goal is to just do a very quick review of some of the top projects happening at the moment and hopefully get some of your ideas and feedback as I go through. Um, I'll try and flip back to the questions after each one just to see if anything's come in while I'm talking. 
ask your questions as we go. So the big project really for, for March 2015 is Bigger Plate Unplugged, the, the mind mapping user conference, which is returning to London this year and it's taking place in uh, just about two weeks, really. So we're getting very close now, which is really very exciting for us. So that's really the focus of our attention this month. And we kind of uh, paused on a few other projects at the moment just to make sure the conference is all set up as it should be. So for anybody who's not familiar with Bigger Play Unplugged, this is our mind map user conference that we launched uh, two years ago. Um, and we're now moving into an annual cycle with the conference. And this next installment is taking place in London on the 19th of March. Uh, we've got a fantastic lineup of speakers um, as well as some interactive sessions. So what I thought I would just try and do is give a very quick overview of who's speaking and what they're speaking about. Um, and I would really encourage anybody who's not already signed up to come and join the event to, to get involved. It, they really are great fun. Uh, they're not big, huge conferences. They're relatively small. Um, they're a great opportunity to meet interesting people doing interesting things with mind maps, um, and we have a good time as well. So um, in terms of speakers this year, we've got some really fantastic speakers, some of whom are returning to speak for their second or even third um, conference, I think. So the first person we've got is uh, iThoughts uh, founder Craig Scott. So if any of you out there are using iThoughts on the iPad, um, Craig is the creator of that uh, very, very great app um, that obviously is hugely, hugely popular amongst iPad users and now and also has a Mac version. Craig is going to come again and uh, he actually spoke at our first conference. He's going to talk about mind mapping from a developer perspective and specifically mobile apps. Uh, it's a very fast moving and dynamic world, the app development world, and Craig has really done an incredible job um, in building a very strong brand within the world of app development. Um, we think this is a really interesting perspective to be sharing with people. So um, if you're a fan of iThoughts, or even if you haven't yet tried iThoughts, um, I think that'll be a presentation that lots of people are very, very interested in. We then have our, our very good friend, Jamie McDonald, returning to speak with us. Uh, Jamie is from Mind Genius, and he did a, a great presentation at our Berlin conference last year. Um, Jamie is a real advocate for, for mind mapping software and, and and just generally, he is a huge believer in the power of mapping to improve our working and our, our sort of um, organization. So he's going to be outlining, again, some, some tips and some ideas for how mapping could be moved to improve working. Um, and Jamie is, um, is someone we always enjoy hearing from, very entertaining and, and knowledgeable speaker as well. We then have from Think Buzan, David, um, who's going to come and talk about how to hack your presentation skills. Um, obviously, Think Buzan, producer of iMindMap software, which has a, a very, very strong presentation mode. If any of you have tried presentation mode in iMindMap, you'll know it. It really is um, quite spectacular. So David is going to come and talk to us. Uh, David is a trainer at, at Think Buzan, and he's going to talk to us about using presentations and improving presentations using mind mapping. Um, so again, a really, um, a really sort of powerful speaker from the mapping world um, to add to the lineup there. We're delighted to welcome David. From exam time, I just mentioned exam time and Andrew who's on the call today, we've got Norman McBrien coming over from Dublin um, and he's gonna talk about exam time and um, best practice studying with mind maps. So exam time is used extensively um, for uh, students and um, Norman's going to give us a great insight hopefully into, into how that works uh, and what the best sort of approach for students is and also tell us a little bit about um, about what um, about what students could be doing more to, with mind mapping. Um, I've just had a quick message in suggesting that you may not be able to see the whole of my screen so let me just go and just change that. Sorry if you've been seeing not much. And if I just flip now to this, hopefully you're seeing the whole map. Apologies there if you're only seeing a small piece of the screen. Um, so the next speaker we've got is, is Sharon Curry, who I'm sure lots of you will be familiar with. Sharon is a, a, a prolific mind mapper, and some of her mind maps on Bigger Plate are some of the most uh, downloaded maps uh, on the whole website. Sharon is uh, a leadership uh, expert. She has worked with uh, the military, with business, with local governments. Uh, she really is a, a real 
uh, leader in leadership, if you like. And she has been using mind mapping in, in some fantastic settings to help people get to grips with being better leaders and improving leadership skills and leadership communication. Um, so we're delighted to have Sharon come and share her, her experience and her, her sort of case studies with us about how mind mapping can enable and support uh, leaders. Uh, and again, there is probably nobody better uh, out there to, um, to talk about that. So we're really excited to have Sharon joining us there. We then have a, a, someone who I'm, I'm very familiar with here in London, but many people may not be so familiar with. Uh, this is uh, Miko Arevua. Miko is a, a lecturer at Regents University, and he lectures in uh, strategy and business management. Uh, he also does a lot of research into effective decision making and effective strategic management. Um, and he's done some absolutely fascinating experiments around the use of mapping for decision making. In, in business context, but also in ways that sort of are applicable to much more than just business. Um, Miko is going to come and talk about how to improve group decision making using mapping. Um, and he'll be largely focused on mind mapping, but he'll also be talking more broadly about mapping in different structures and how it can help and enable decision making. So a, a real expert here that I'm, I'm really excited to have joining us. We then have uh, Sergey, who is um, from a, an organization based here in London in the very sort of trendy um, tech Shoreditch area of London. Um, he currently works at an organization called Brilliant Basics, who do a lot of, um, they're a full service digital agency. They do work with very, very big companies around the world whose names you would recognize. Um, Sergey is actually an independent uh, consultant, but he's been working with them for some time. Um, and I met Sergey probably six months ago, and he showed me how he was using mind maps to manage very, very complicated digital projects, um, you know, entire websites and apps for banks, very, very complicated projects with lots of stakeholders and lots of moving parts. Um, and he has a very, very um, interesting way of keeping track of everything and managing everything. And really his core belief is that if you insert structure into projects, uh, you can keep them healthy. And he is a big believer that the structure needed for projects is, is mind mapping in many cases. Um, so he, again, is a, a great perspective to, to have with us and, and a real sort of um, great example of mind mapping being used in a real everyday business context. We then have my friend uh, Madeleine, who's uh, been to two or three of our conferences already. Um, and she's going to come and talk um, as well, I was actually with Madeleine last week in Brussels, and she is um, teaching students in Brussels. Uh, she's teaching business and communication and English um, all together, if you like. And she is really um, focused on how mind mapping is a skill that students need to be equipped with as they move through their lives. And we had a long conversation where we were both suggesting that a lot of students are moving from school to university and then from university onto um, their working lives. And they are missing a really key set of thinking and learning tools um, and skills and, and really mind mapping really is one of those. So Madeleine's going to talk about how we can probably equip our students much better for their learning and also for their careers if we were to familiarize more of them with mapping um, earlier on and, and more, more coherently. So that's your speaker lineup um, for, for the conference, which I hope you'll agree is, is really Quite spectacular. There's just, I think it's the most varied um, collection of perspectives we've ever had. Um, some really interesting expertise going to be brought to the conference. So we're really, really excited about that. We also have a couple of interactive sessions, as always. Um, we're going to do two sort of group interactive sessions where we're going to be asking delegates to share their views and debate and discuss. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is awareness, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, and this is something that came out of the recent annual mind map report, where lots of people said the biggest challenges are people not being aware of mind mapping, people not knowing what a mind map is and people not understanding how mind mapping can be applied to their own particular working role or their own lives. So we're gonna have a discussion as a, as a whole sort of conference about how can we improve awareness of mind mapping and how can we improve the basic knowledge of what a mind map is and perhaps most importantly, how can we help people understand how to use it themselves? And this is the sort of the progression that we see. And we're going to sort of challenge these ideas with our with our conference guests and, and hopefully come up with some ideas that we can actually put into action. 
Um, our conferences are, are very much focused on trying to come up with ways to improve um, my mapping. So again, we'll be looking for perspectives from our speakers and, and from anybody who's attending. We'll also be then running a, a sort of uh, forward-looking session where we're going to talk about the future of mind mapping. Uh, we did a, a session like this at our Berlin conference, and it was uh, very creative, lots of cool ideas, and just quite good fun. So we thought we'd try and replicate that and, and reproduce um, the structure and, and maybe get some new ideas that uh, Bigger Plate can work on and maybe some of the other people in the room can work on. And then finally, we're going to have a, a Bigger Plate Q&A. We, we usually have these at the conferences, and it's really just an opportunity for people to ask any questions they have about the projects with working on about things they would like to see us work on um, we take these sessions very very seriously um, we, we like to hear what people want to see from us and we have actually gone ahead and built things based on what people have said in those sessions so they're really very important and um, and hopefully you'll you'll sort of get value out of them so that's really a summary of bigger plate unplugged and I, I hope um, if anybody is on the fence and thinking about coming, I hope that might um, convince you to come along. Uh, it should be a really, really great day. We've got some nice uh, drinks in the evening afterwards for people to, to get to know each other, and, and it should be just a really good day. So uh, I hope lots of you will come along to that. I'm just going to close this briefly and see if there's any questions. Um, I can just see Barney telling me he can only see the top left screen. That's good. I've fixed that, hopefully. Uh, Andrew similarly says so screen. Um, so we've got Andrew Wilcox here from um, from the UK, who's who's on the call today. Andrew, I think we're seeing you at the London conference. So look look forward to that. Um, you've posted a link also to uh, something I can't quite see. Um, I've got a few people telling me the map is cut off. So hopefully I <laughs> I fix that now. Sorry. Um, uh, I can see. So if there's any questions now about uh, Bigger Plate Unplugged, um, that would be good. Andrew, I can't uh, click the link that you've posted. So if you want to um, tell me what that link is, uh, I, I don't know what that is and I'm not able to click it. So if you just tell me what that is, that'd be really useful and I'll, I'll follow that up. So I'm just going to go back to my map. Um, oh, hello. I can just see Marco uh, coming to us from Italy today. Marco, great to to see you on the call. I hope all is well over in uh, in Italy. Um, Marco did a great presentation at our Berlin conference about facilitation using my map. So hopefully Marco can um, tell everyone that the, the Bigger Play Unplugged events are worth getting involved in. So good to see you, Marco. Thank you for joining the call. Um, and I can see a uh, question here. OK, so Andrew, I think this is probably what your link was to do with maybe. So Andrew is asking, would anybody like to meet up during the afternoon for a beer and a Chinese in the evening before the conference? I'm assuming that would be Andrew. Um, so yeah, I, th this is something we sort of started to look at whether we should organize. And in the end, we we just thought we, we don't want to be too prescriptive and, and people maybe might like to organize themselves to go and meet for a beer if people are coming from abroad obviously we'll have some drinks and things in the evening after the conference but if you maybe want to meet up with some other mappers the night before for, for a drink and a meal it's, it's a really good way of getting to know some people who you'll see the next day um, possibly Andrew one of the things might be worth doing is um, posting something maybe in our LinkedIn group um, I know there's a few people who are in the LinkedIn group who will also be coming to the conference, so that might be a good space to to ask that question. And certainly, I'll 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 um, see if I can connect up some of the people who I know are traveling from abroad to see if they want to meet up and, and do something. So if anybody else is interested in, in meeting up uh, for, a, for a discussion and, and a, a sort of get to know each other before the conference, um, please uh, let us know and we'll try and put you in touch with each other and, and probably the LinkedIn group, the Bigger Plate LinkedIn group may be the best place to organize that. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to my map, hopefully do it correct this time. Um, and just flip here. I think I've done it the right way this time. <clears throat> so there's just a couple of other projects on the go at the moment. And as I say, we kind of pause most things at the moment. Um, there's a lot happening technically, but it's not very interesting at the moment. That, that hopefully will become interesting by the next time I do this call. Um, but in the meantime, there's a couple of other projects that are, I'm going to talk a little bit more about at Bigger Plate Unplugged. Um, but again, it's probably just uh, interesting for me to see what you think of these ideas now. So the first is um, part of our 
our sort of three-year event plan really is bigger plate unplugged now moves into the annual cycle so we're doing london this year new york next year and brussels the year after um but we know there's really a need now for us to to build a sort of second layer of um events and community opportunities to connect and engage um, but we need to obviously on our part we need to try and keep it realistic and manageable we can't run a, a conference in every city where we know there are mappers and, and there simply isn't the demand for, for a conference in every city so what we're creating is something that we've we've called the bigger plate brunch club and the idea of the brunch club is that we will um, host a number of small regional meetings in areas where we know we have a lot of um, or where we know we have a good number of, of um, very active members of our community so we all aim to to visit key cities um, where we know there are people who want to engage with each other and engage with bigger plate and we're basically going to keep them very small we they're going to be about 10 people maximum um, it'll be an invitation based event so we will invite people who we know are in the area first and foremost they'll have the first opportunity to get involved um, and then we'll put it out to the general public and they will be able to request if you like an invitation but really this is going to be a round table breakfast meeting we'll, we'll provide some breakfast food and and it'll be brunch it'll be a slightly more sociable time than most breakfast meetings i go to um, and really what we're looking for is for these groups to become um, if you like advisory groups for what bigger plate should be doing in each region so um, we're going to launch this um, in April this year so after bigger plate unplugged and we are provisionally aiming to get the first event set up for uh, Brussels um, and also Amsterdam we have a very active community in in the Netherlands and we have some really great uh, community members in, in uh, Belgium so we're going to start with these two cities, but we're also going to try and bring these these small meetings to uh, regional areas in the UK. So uh, Glasgow and Scotland is one that's on the agenda, um, possibly Manchester, these sort of cities as well. Um, but really what we're going to be doing is wherever we know we've got a handful of really good uh, active members of our community, we're going to try and bring one of these meetings to your area and help to connect up the local community a little bit more. These will be more regular. They'll happen far more regularly than, than for example, the conferences. Um, and eventually, we hope these will, meetings will sort of just become a, a really regular part of people's calendar. And uh, each regional meeting will help us a bigger plate to know what would that regional community like to see happen next? How can we better have... Uh, how can we spread mind mapping in that region? So when we're in Brussels, we'll be talking about how can we spread mind mapping further into business and education and government in Brussels? Um, and similarly with Amsterdam and beyond, we'll also be hearing from um, the attendees at those events, what are they doing at the moment with mapping and how can we support them? And, and we know there are lots of small businesses who use mapping and, and are pushing mind mapping in, in other ways. So we wanna start connecting up these regional communities a bit more. So anybody who's on the call today who, who thinks they would like to maybe get involved in that, maybe help us uh, organize a regional meeting in, in your part of the world, um, we really would like to hear from you. This is gonna be a big project, uh, but it should, again, help to really create some nice momentum uh, and connect up the community a little bit more. So very much linked to the Brunch Club concept um, is our ambassador program, which we are in the process of sort of designing and, and building out. Um, you may have seen ambassador programs on uh, for companies like Evernote, uh, Google, Prezi, lots of um, web-based companies have, have these ambassador programs. Uh, some are good, some are probably not so good. We are aiming to have a very, very simple um, ambassador program. And really the, the primary purpose of that is to recognize those people who are really leading within the bigger plate community. So those members who are really contributing a lot to our site, who are trying to help other people understand mind mapping. Um, so people who are really sort of putting energy into the mind mapping space, we wanna recognize these people and we wanna help other people find these, uh, these leaders. So we think, uh, could be the kind of people who provide help for the community. So um, an ambassador might be a specialist in a particular area so that if somebody asks a question, we can say, okay, here's the ambassador you should go talk to that they might be able to help you um, very quickly. 
we also think the ambassadors will potentially be really important to help us promote the use cases for mind mapping. Um, so as, as you may know, BiggerPlate is very much focused on trying to show how mind mapping is being used on a daily basis in different settings around the world. And we think ambassadors could be great ways to help us showcase these type of uses. Um, and, and we're very excited to, to do that. The link to the brunch club is we will be tying these two things very closely together. So um, our thinking at the moment is we will go and do a brunch club meeting in areas where we know we have got two or three regional ambassadors. So again, if you are one of these very engaged and active members of our community and you would like to see Bigger Plate bring some more um, opportunities to your part of the world, um, I hope the ambassador program and the brunch club ideas are, are perhaps getting you uh, excited. This is still quite early days, but we hope to move this along quite quickly. Um, from my perspective, this is an easier project to move along because it's not technical. Um, and that means I can actually do it instead of relying on other members of the team to build things on the website. So if anybody has any questions about the brunch club, what they're for, what the purpose of that is, or what we hope to achieve, um, or the ambassador program. Uh, if you want to just throw them into the, the questions panel at the moment, that would be really, really useful for me to see what people's initial reactions are, um, and maybe just have a little bit of a, a back and forth about, about people who might want to become ambassadors or might want to get involved in the brunch club. Um, I'm just going to close down this map in one second after I just focus on the final piece, which is just to, to make you aware that we are We've scheduled an, another Hangout, but a very specific one that's focused on education. And that's on the 12th of March. And again, if you go to biggerplate forward slash events, you can see the education Hangout. And we're going to be speaking to a couple of people from different countries who are involved in trying to introduce mind mapping into the education sector, both at school and university level. Um, and I'm going to have them on the call with me, so it won't just be me talking. We're going to be asking them some questions and hearing from them about how we might be able to do more, how successful they have been, some of the barriers. Um, so if anybody watching is involved in the world of education, um, we'd really like to get as many perspectives involved in that as possible so we can really start to improve how we introduce mind mapping into education. The next one of these calls will be on the 9th of April. And again, you can um, join up with that and I hope you'll, you'll be back. There should be some interesting things to show you by the time we get to the 9th of April. Um, and then I'm just going to hand it back to, to all of you for any questions and feedback. I know there's usually a little bit of a delay um, between what I'm talking about and the ability to do questions. Um, so I'm just going to flip back to the camera and hopefully we can see um, if there's any questions. So, uh, Andrew, I can see you're just saying the group was for anybody liking to meet up. That's, that's good. Um, uh, Bart says, that sounds as good. New initiatives, Liam. Uh, thank you, Bart. I hope the new initiatives you think sound good are the, the brunch club and the ambassadors. And um, I can't remember exactly. Uh, you're in Delft, I think, Bart. I think I, I remember you are in Delft. Um, so again, um, we're bringing the, the, the brunch club to Amsterdam, um, which I think is only a sort of 30 or 40 minutes on the train from Delft. So again, Bart, if you were interested to get involved in, in when we get the brunch club launched in Amsterdam, um, it'd be really interesting to have you, have you come along um, and, and be involved in, in getting that up and running. So thank you, Bart. And, and if you're interested in getting involved in that, then, then please just send me an email and, and we can follow that up. Um, Andrew says he has posted about the LinkedIn group um, uh, about meetings. So that's good. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so I'm just scrolling down any new questions. Uh, there's a few things saying the screen is cut off. Uh, I'm just going to delete those ones so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Uh, So Brian and Andrew and Bart and Marco. Uh, right, Andrew's suggesting I might need to approve the conversation in LinkedIn group. I'll get Barney to check that and see if we can. Um, and so I can't see any more questions coming in at the minute. I know there's a little bit of a delay, um, and I can see there's, there's still people on the call, so I haven't got too boring, hopefully. Um, but if anybody has any questions or comments about 
any of the uh, projects or about Bigger Plate Unplugged, uh, now's your time to share them. Uh, I try not to let these sessions go on too long if there's no questions. So I've just got rid of all the questions related to the screen sharing. So now it should just be um, space for any new questions coming in. Um, Chris, uh, Chris Gloss, that is not a name I'm familiar with. Uh, Chris, very nice to uh, theoretically meet you. Chris, I'm not sure where you're coming to uh, from in the world. Um, oh, I can see, that's very clever of Google. I can see, Chris, you're based in Atlanta, which is somewhere I haven't been since I was a very small child. So, um, hi, Chris, thank you for joining us. That's all the way from that. Um, thank you for joining the call. Uh, Chris says he'd like to learn more about being an ambassador. Well, um, if I can give you some of the sort of key things we have in our mind about what an ambassador will look like, that maybe gives you and, and anybody else who's interested a, a sense of, of what we're going to be uh, looking for. Um, if anybody wants to get more detail about the proposed ambassador program, you can email me directly at Liam. L I A M at biggerplate.com, and I'll provide you with, with more information and we can work through that. But in general terms, the ambassadors, um, or what we, we plan to be ambassadors, will be people who have shared at least sort of 20, 25 maps on Bigger Plate. That's the most important thing from our perspective is we're not just going to have ambassadors who are not familiar with Bigger Plate. The idea of a Bigger Plate ambassador is you are an ambassador for what Bigger Plate is, what we're about, and what we do. Um, and more broadly, that means you're, a, you're an ambassador for mind mapping and, and you'll be supported by us. So the first thing is anybody wanting to be an ambassador, if they haven't already shared some mind maps on Bigger Plate, um, that'll be the first place to start. Um, so that, you know, if we're saying Chris is an ambassador and his specialty is project management and he's in the US, uh, we need to be able to show people here Chris's maps to show that he's an expert in project management. Um, so really, map sharing on Bigger Plate is the first, uh, the first criteria, if you like, to become a Bigger Plate ambassador. Um, the second piece that we think is going to be quite important is that the ambassadors are active in, in one or two social media channels. Um, when I say active, I mean they are um, engaging with others, there's natural conversation, they're not just um, auto-retweeting things on Twitter or posting their, um, their daily, these, these sort of annoying things that scrape and uh, tweet nonsense. So we're going to be looking for people who have at least one active social media channel so that if somebody asks us a question and we think you're the right ambassador that might be able to help with that question, um, we'll be able to point them to your social media channels, whether that's Twitter uh, or Google Plus. Uh, we have two ones that are going to be important. Obviously, Chris, you're on Google Plus here, so you've joined us today. So, um, so first, map sharing. Secondly, you've got to be accessible in Google Plus. The third thing, which we need to just try and figure out exactly how we're going to organize it, is we, we think an ambassador should have a, a stated area of um, expertise or interest. Uh, I don't think it would be particularly helpful for Bigger Plate to be saying, here are 100 ambassadors and they are all just interested in mind mapping. I don't know that that would be that helpful for the wider community to find experts. So the third sort of criteria, if you like, would be that every ambassador would need to have uh, a, a, a particular sort of area of specialty that they would like to be known as an ambassador for. So um, for example, uh, I might become the ambassador for higher education universities in the UK. So, or I might be the ambassador in Atlanta um, in the US for um, human resources or something like that. So it, whether it's business or education or something quite abstract, we think every ambassador needs to have a sort of a stated um, specialty and a stated area of expertise so that we can point the right people um, uh, we can point people to the right experts, if you like, if there are questions and, and that sort of thing. So I hope, Chris, that gives you a little bit of a sense of of, um, of what we view at an ambassador, what that will look like. Um, as I say, there's nothing about it on the website yet because it's, it's not finished, um, but it'll be a, a, a case of bigger plate ambassadors will have to be people who are regularly active and sharing and contributing to biggerplate.com. That's, that's really the essence of it. Um, this is not simply a way to promote your business or, or, or get a few extra website clicks. This is a way for us to recognize the people who are making the greatest contribution to, to our community and our site. And in return for, for them helping us even more, 
we will be um, supporting them through helping to promote their social media, their, their businesses. Um, they will be getting some probably some freebies and um, uh, free tickets to different things we do, free resources. That there will hopefully be a really sort of good two-way exchange. If you keep supporting Bigger Plate and working hard as an ambassador for us, we will keep supporting you and, and um, doing interesting things to, to keep you engaged, hopefully. So I hope, Chris, that gives you uh, a little bit more information uh, about what the ambassadors might look like. Um, and thank you again for, for joining us uh, from Atlanta, having not, not seen your name on a call before. That, that's great to see. So thank you, Chris, for that question. Um, I can't see any more questions coming in at the minute. I will just pause for 10, 20 seconds just to see if there's a time delay from anything, um, anything left to come in. Um, the question about meeting up the night before the Bigger Plate Uncom Unplugged conference, Andrew, I will just pick that up. Um, I think Barney will be probably have seen any any things in LinkedIn or anything like that. So I'll, I'll check with him and make sure that option is visible to people. As I say, we're not going to organise anything ourselves because we don't know where people will be staying and, and we don't want to create an option that's totally at odds with what people are doing. Um, but I would really encourage anyone to meet up the night before who can it usually makes for a more interesting conference the next day when people have maybe made a few more friends the night before so um so i'll check in with barney about um how we can just connect anybody who's interested in that and, and we'll go from there so i can't see any more questions and i don't want to keep anybody waiting longer than they need to so i'm probably going to wrap up uh this month's town hall hangout as I said before, if anybody has any questions or would like to know more about being an ambassador or about the Brunch Club events, uh, please email me, liam at biggerplate.com, and I will do my best to uh, get back to you with some more information. Uh, please just bear in mind that we are right in the run-up now to the conference, so um, we're all a little bit um, under pressure in terms of time and our ability to manage lots of different things. Um, but in the meantime, I hope uh, all of you have a, a great March. Uh, I look forward to seeing some of you at the conference and uh, thank you very much for tuning into this month's call and uh, I hope to see some of you if not all of you uh, next month when we should have some quite exciting uh, new additions to the website to tell you about as well. So thank you all very much and um, uh, catch up with you soon. Bye.